Welcome to Center of Light Foundation. What does Easter, the resurrection, and the Passover, what do they have in common? <laughs> you. Welcome to Center of Light. Good to see you tonight. Tonight is Center of Light. Harvest. Harvest. It's time we reap what we have sown. What we have grown. Let me do a couple of things real quick. Still learning, still learning. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, ba -bum -bum -bum. There we go. Tonight is Center of Light. Harvest. Easter. Resurrection, Passover, mostly about resurrection, but we're going to include some of the other beautiful elements for this time of year. Also, later, I'm going to shift seasons on you. <laughs> we're going to go back to Christmas. However, it all has to do with baby Jesus. Dear Lord, good to see everybody. Let me check a few things. Woo, technology, I love it. It's a druggy for me. Hello, Dana Trotta. Blessings. All right, let's get down to some beeswax. Tonight is Center of Light. Foundation. Harvest. Easter. Resurrection. Passover. What do they have in common? They have you in common. Power. Information is power. Information. Information. Being in a formation with information doubles the hand, doubles the bet. Bet that. Creates breakthroughs in our lives. We're able to consciously reconnect again to love the source itself. This past Easter, I was blessed by my Facebook feed and everyone feeding me dearly. He has risen. 
He has risen. He has risen. Love it. I want to go deeper. A whole lot deeper. He has risen. Yes, he has. Who is he? That would be Jesus. Yeshua. Christ has not risen. Christ always has been, is, and forever will be lofted. So, if Jesus rose, he rose to something. What is the something he rose to? He rose to the occasion of becoming the fully illumined Christ consciousness. Because if he was already Christ, there'd be no need to rise, resurrect, Easter, fertility, a new, new birth, reborn. So Jesus rose. He has arisen. Christ has not arisen. It's always lofty into the spiritual altitudes. When I was in Homa, Louisiana, visiting my father, I was blessed to look at my face, my social media feeds and see all of this Christ, Jesus has risen. He, he, I get it, I love it. So we're gonna go a little deeper. And lo and behold, as I'm having my beautiful day, <laughs> morning, with coffee, and happy 420, y'all. Someone throws a Homa Courier newspaper on the table. Here's the paper. And on the front page, this was the article in the picture. I'm drawing a picture here. Here's the article. I'm not making fun. But I am absolutely, unequivocally, definitely bringing to light. That's my intention. As I always mention, we're going to go deeper into Easter, Resurrection, and Passover. And they all have in common you. So the newspaper is now on the kitchen table, and I began to read it. This is where the Council of Nicaea, the late 300s, hello, look it up, an event that took place where things were manipulated. Lovingly, unlovingly, language has been transformed, transfixed, transmuted, been tossed all around like a salad. Well. If we want to truly eat the divine diet and put some grace and honey on our palate, we have to see correctly. There's a lot of ignorance. It's the absolute right word. Surrounding the resurrection and many things from the Bible and other scripture. So let's look at it honestly. And honestly, we will. Here's the article. Front page, hike for Christ. Hike for Christ. Christ does not need to be hiked for. Christ consciousness doesn't need our help. It's so arrogant. In fact, it's the other way around. We <laughs> need to hike up Mount Sinai ourselves. Yes, I know this was Moses, but it is applicable as we make our exodus out of hell and to a heavenly world 
Christ does not need to be hiked for. Jesus did his job 2,000 plus years ago. Guess whose turn it is? Yours and mine. In fact, he, the consciousness, she, would want it that way. The consciousness of Christ is already illuminated. It's not worried. It's not in a hurry. It's not threatened. It's forever. So it's waiting on us to take on this step-by-step -step, thousand years if it takes spiritual endeavor. So really, Christ doesn't need to be hiked for. We need to hike for ourselves. So the, res the resurrection now belongs to you and me. It's our turn. I understand revering the master, the teacher, and dropping to a humbled knee and saying, Dear Lord, thank thee for showing me and the way of it all the way. To be fully illuminated as a Christian, as a Buddha, as a whatever that's beautiful to you and yours, you have to get so lost in the profundity of your deity as to why you revered in the first place. So lost in it that we lose all sense of self, of what we know as ourselves to be, at least for now. It's about our own Easter. It's about our own Easter egg hunt, seeking forever. Why not jump into the hunt with all you have if you're going to seek at all? And in so doing, we resurrect. And then we find ourselves standing strong and tall. And we pass over the obstacles, the speed bumps of it all. Yes, revere the teachers. You are your greatest teacher. Look in the mirror and say, I love you. <laughs> See who answers back. <laughs> Tonight is Center of Light Harvest. We have worked for eons of time, hard, diligent, earnestly, lovingly, carefully, we've become beautiful messes in lots of scenarios. Easter equals fertility, a new rebirth, resurrect, resurrection, rise up, stand up, wake up. Passover equals Pass over the obstacles in life, the speed bumps, as I mentioned, the issues that have always slowed you down. Take this time to liberate yourself. Heaven is here. Now, it's everywhere all the time. But the window, the gate, our minds and hearts are opening. And spirit and the divine and the grand scheme, they are hoping, if there's such a word, but it makes the point, that we go on that Easter egg hunt. On a humbled knee, we revere the teacher. And then the teacher says, stand up. You are my brother or my sister. You will do the works that I have, if not more. And we resurrect. And then we pass over the threshold of nonsense into everything that makes sense to anything at all. This is what the resurrection is about. It's always been about you, me, we, always. Jesus was the first. Well, there were many others. Horace, metaphorically, metaphysically. It's all the same. As above, so below, on forever it will go. But let's just use Jesus in this example. He has risen. He rose to the level of Christ. Because if he was already Christ here on the earth, there would be no need to rise anywhere. But they're speaking about he rose out of the cycle of death. Well, the fact that there would be death would imply that I'm here and I have died. And he rose through the illusion of it all. 
to the level of Christ, which is the reality of it all. I'm going to go into um, something I want to re- I was going to read it for you, but I remembered in the movie, And the Meek Shall Inherit the Earth, there's a video segment about the life of Christ, and I use excerpts from Homecoming Cross and the Bridge to the Soul as the voiceover underneath the life of Jesus. His, his life converting from messenger to the Son, um, resurrection, and how it's time to put it aside. Not because it's not important, it's because we are equally important. And we must see the beauty in our own selves, through our own mess. And in such a way, the mess is beautiful itself. And so I did mention I'm going to go (laughs) into uh, another theme entirely. After the Jesus segment, I'm going to go. It's going to be Christmas again, y'all. Christmas. Christ Mass. Christ Mass Consciousness. This is quite a few years ago. I'm going to go into a vesseling. I actually just started off talking and sharing like I'm doing now. And something descended. I ascended. I have risen. We all rise. We're all going to rise together when we fall into this vesseling that I do. Um, Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. I am sending you oodles and oodles and oodles of absolute love, infinite light on this Center of Light Foundation night. He has risen. Who is he? Who is she? Look in the mirror. And you will see the Christ dwells in you. Or you couldn't see it all. It requires the Christ principle to be able to see. That's why the Christ does not rise. The Christ is eternal. It's this level of spiritual consciousness. Look up the word Christos. This existed before the birth of Jesus even. It's Greek. It means the anointed. So let's get one pointed, focused into some baby Jesus. See you shortly. This is going to be about 20 minutes. Enjoy. Really beautiful segment. I'll see you shortly. Blessings. Christ Jesus was a prime example of supreme living during his time upon earth. By living a life of righteousness and peace, he was able to make a powerful impact and a profound difference. Some 2,000 years later, his life is still the standard. He is still the truth, the hope, the light, and the way. His teachings have inspired countless millions to live a pure and love-filled life, thus creating the energy needed for the whole world to shift. Jesus searched for God his entire early life, walking the land believing he was only a messenger. But as an adult, when he visited the Himalayan monasteries, he learned from the masters who lived there to seek God within himself. And he came to the realization that the external world was only a kaleidoscopic picture interpreted by his own mind. His pilgrimage was a great success in that it helped him to realize that he was no longer just a messenger of God, but was now the Son of God. When Jesus stood upon the hill and spoke to the multitude, the young teacher offered great wisdom, but few believed his words. In fact, many shouted, Are you the Messiah? If you are truly the Messiah, then perform a miracle for us. Because of their doubt and fear, people did not realize that the miracle was already there in the form of Jesus. He was there to inform them about their own freedom, their divine nature, and the fact that indeed they were no different from him. Can you see how so many missed their window of opportunity to reach spiritual liberation because they doubted that he was the Christ. Jesus appeared to be an ordinary man like everyone else, but soon enough, no one could deny his extraordinary presence. Once people believed that he was who he said he was, why didn't they follow him then? Because soldiers using brute force if necessary were regularly deployed to bring to a halt all the rabble-rousing that seemed to happen wherever he went. But despite all adversity, Jesus pushed on to the very end. When that day came, Jesus accepted his death freely, thus showing those around him how such an event is not the end of life, but only a transition to another level of being, 
the infinite and immortal change of the Atma, the spirit. For dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Genesis 3.19 In the centuries since Jesus' ascension, most have focused on his death instead of his life and his afterlife. People still seek him on the cross, but he is no longer there. As long as people continue to be bound to that image, they cannot begin to understand the crucifixion metaphor. Now, if you want to be a true follower of Christ, you must take Jesus down from that old rugged cross and move on with your life. Do you not understand that the lamb was sacrificed then for your liberation now? Let me ask you a question. Does the fact that most in his time doubted that he was the Christ at one detract from the truth about the one called Jesus? There are many who already accept this 2,000 year old truth, but know that the cycle of doubt versus truth is happening yet again. Yes, there are many who have inherited the heirloom of doubt from those who questioned Jesus on the hill. Their misgivings echo now as they did then. If you New Agers think you are messiahs with your I am God view, then perform a miracle for us, they say. I ask you, do you want to be one of those in Jesus' time regarded by future generations as one of history's doubters? Your answers matter not, for no amount of doubt can take away the validity of the messiahship appearing now to enlighten you about your freedom, power, and oneness with God. How cool was that? It took us from what seems like a bad dream, the past, was a bad dream because we're creating all of it and we're all waking up to where the movie got to a somewhat central point and the awakening begins to happen our eyes are opening from our last night's sleep we're coming to the room for the day kind of thing is what's happening and all of a sudden the god men enter the world stage yeshua the Liberator, Swamji, the Bringer of Peace, Satya Sai Baba, the highest incarnation of God to ever step foot on this planet. It's the Godhead. It's who he was. And he's coming back. He died in 2011. Eight years. That's about now. Sometime soon, things are going to be coming out. Just be aware. Something Swamji, the bringer of peace, did say in the presentation. When I asked him the question when I was interviewing him, interviewing him I asked him, is world peace going to happen? He said, absolutely. That just alleviated, if you're such a one to be able to hear this message, should alleviate your worry for the rest of your physical mortal life about the condition of the world. Hence when I said last night in my presentation, what is happening? I'm looking for it one moment. Is this, everyone's moving vertical, not everyone. Many people are moving vertical. They're getting into the current. They're moving on toward the plane of ever ending and never ending, ever expanding bliss while others are sitting on the plane of non-change. It's all done by choice. All of it. Swamji did tell me in it, the last interview I'd done with him, he said that world peace meetings in the future, this is what he told me, it's going to happen because he told me. I know who he is. He knows who he is as to why I'm able to know who he is. And everyone who's ever experienced this ninth incarnation of God on this planet as Swamji, the first God-realized soul to ever step foot on this planet thousands upon many thousands of years ago. He's here. Again, Lord Dr., an aspect of the same divinity as Jesus, Buddha, Krishna, and so forth and so on. This is not about earth. 
This is universal. This is cosmic. This is divine. The chosen are those who choose to be chosen. They are called the chosen few because only few will answer the call. Yanava steps in, so begins to speak. Keith goes to the side. He did not see this coming. He was going to pause. <laughs> I'm going to use him while I got him. Soul steps forward. Roll call, dear ones. John Doe, are you here? Jill Doe, are you here? You either say here or present. Do we not? When we are in school, and dear ones, you are in the school of earth, and I'm calling you. Are you here and or present? Good. It's Christmas. Here's your present. In a nice little package with a beautiful little bow from spirit to you. Who are those fortunate meek? It is all of you when you choose to stop being weak. And it most comes out all wrong when you speak, does it not? The meek are those who likely become silent because in that shhness there's no room for violence. And you know what I speak of. Because it comes from a space of heart and a space of love. And the only way you will find yourself aloft and yet above. Is to stop. You may ask, what is it that I am to stop? Do you really need soul to explain that to you? Are you not impregnated with the fire and the consciousness and the wisdom called your conscience, that small voice that is ever so powerful? You have that faculty. You have that reasoning ability. Why are you not using it to its fullest capacity? Simply, it's no judgment. Just ask yourself, why am I? And it resounds within you. The answer just simply steps to the fore. See how easy that was? It's not a chore. It's simply a choice. And when you choose the highest choice, then you gain a voice as the vessel before you. And as many of you in here are now understanding and integrating yourselves, congratulate yourself. It's very well deserved. In the movie, Soul is not going to say that you saw. In the movie that you experienced on levels you cannot possibly even understand in this moment, nonetheless, you did take it all in. Take it all in with the eyes, with the ears, with the feeling base, with the capacity and the fullness of who you are. That great and amazing self that you call me. Yanava, the soul, is who you are. Sounded egoistic, didn't it? That's your folly, not spirits. Doesn't spirit know exactly who it is? When you move around what you call your world with this level of confidence, ah, suddenly your gloomy day gets brighter. Because you no longer require anyone else to make you feel lighter. You take up that cause in earnest, diligently upon yourself. Your self. Everyone has a myself. Who is this me? And that selfness. The words that surround self, there are many different variations or compounds. Selfish, self-full, self-doubt, self-realization, self-love, self-pity. 
with all of these different variations, shouldn't have gone plural from self one. After that, it should have been called selves. It's still the same self. The myriad forms of the different of the same self that you choose differently as you divide and shatter what you call the wholeness. And the few ideas that you play with that follows self dash whatever word you insert and or choose most importantly. Out of all of those that you can name, there are gazillions, in fact, infinite aspects of that same self that you are yet to experience. See, the way it all works is the Jesus that you know of that lived 2,000 years ago you just hadn't experienced it yet. Your consciousness has not yet went into the body and the proximity of the one that you know as Jesus. And when you do, you will become illumined. Everyone has their turn to be Jesus. Everyone has their turn to be Keith. Everyone has their turn to be you. Infinitely, over and 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 over, the game is played. The groundwork has already been laid. <laughs> Did you make your bed this morning? Everyone has their turn to be everyone. And until then, nothing happens. And the form of your ultimate expansion into everything. For how else can it come about? How can you be the everything if you don't comprehend the everything? It takes a very long time. That which you call time because you're the one living in space. Time is the overlord of infinity paradoxically. Wrap your heart around that. Time is the overlord and the observer of the time that does not exist. And the more you fall within yourself deeply, sincerely, and passionately, the conundrums will get greater. And that which you can't even possibly understand right now in this moment. Unless you're in a deep meditation where you get glimpses and little inklings of ideas of, oh my God, I somewhat understood something for a fleeting moment. And the conundrums and the riddles will get greater as you expand. Can't happen any other way, can it? Because there's always the aha of the answer that surfaces via your intention to go in with, in with and seek via your question. So you get a glimpse, and the question is posed, whether you know you posed that question or not. But what was that? That's the question. And when the answer comes, you will begin to dwell in that expanded experience. And that expanded experience. And that expanded experience. Forever. You mean there's more work to do? There has never been any work to do. <laughs> never. Your only endeavor is to want deeper, greater, expanded degrees of bliss. And when I use the word want, I don't mean this as a haunt you with the negative affirmation implying that I'm lacking something as to why I want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. This is not what the word want means in this scenario. I yearn. I'm hungry. I want this. I deserve it. It belongs to me, and I don't see it right now. And I'm dropping myself into an intentional space of saying, 
I am worthy. Where is it? That's it. Over and over and over. Over and under. In and out. Around and all about. Without a doubt. Now, no matter how much you are quiet. Shh. Or how much you shout. You will have a smile on your face. Or either you will pout. The great divide is happening. The energies are separating. That is going to be your experience for quite a long time until you shift in a much larger way. But for now, it is purposeful, purposeful for you to understand this as a division. But never lose the vision that things are holy and perfect in their dividing. It's just part of the dance, loved one. Simply, it's just part of the dance. Give yourself a chance to catch this 26,000-year-old window that is open. Yanava, because I am you, you are me, and together we are hoping that your consciousness may be released from your mind, not from your body, but from the, the opinions of the mind. And when you do, dear one, there you will find everything that you have been looking for. And it's nothing at all. Welcome back to Center of Light. Good to see you tonight. We are speaking about some baby Jesus. Dear Lord, I love being in the presence of Yeshua. I love talking about it. him, it, it. It's an it. Yeshua is now the Christ consciousness. Where is he? Jesus is resurrected into Christ consciousness and the Christ consciousness is everywhere. As I have said many times in my presentations. So Jesus has resurrected. I love it. I want it. To where? Where did he resurrect to? Well, we discussed. Honestly, looked at. Christ consciousness. But what is that? Where is it? Now what? Do we think that when we pass, we're going to be there with Jesus? Can be. Buddha? Can be. Your deceased loved ones? Can be. All of that in turn. But let's speak about the Jesus aspect of it for now. So we resurrect through death. Our death. Ironically, death is the greatest expression of life itself. Birthed back into the divine. So Jesus is there to greet us and we're sitting on a park bench and he's got his arm around you and he goes, you did good in this life. I'm proud of you. And it's a nice breezy day and there's some pigeons everywhere. Ooh, ooh. And lions are lying down, laying, lying, lions are lying with the lambs and everybody's getting along. And we do this for four hours or for however long. Simple question. Now what? What happens beyond this idea, death, dying, grief, loss, passing over, Passover, Easter, the resurrection, Passover? We understand these simple, beautiful teachings and principles of the teacher, who is the divine principle itself. Seriously, I am asking the most important, powerful question for our next level to happen, begin, start, ensue, which is, now what? It, there's always a now what. In every infinite moment, 
the way the universe expands through all of this, all of it in creation, is the sentient consciousness of asking, now what? I am in the garden of eternal forever. I know this is the human mind's way of understanding, but even in the divine mind, maybe a little more lighter and airy-fairy, but the question is always posed. Now what? Everything's beautiful. Everything is ecstasy. Everything is divine bliss. Can we get more beautiful, more ecstatic, and more blissful? And through everything in the creation, God begins to play divine Leela sport. Plays a, a game has been ensued. Chick dude, we all say, I want to go to a planetary system, onto a planet, and exist to play out this game. I want to play too, y'all. Don't leave me out. Can I go? Sure you can go. And we've been doing this forever. We're going to harvest, which we are now. We're going to Easter. Seeds, eggs have been planted. Happy Easter. The Easter bunny's there. His little tail is popping and wagging. And then as we take in these spiritual nuggets, we begin to resurrect. We begin to die unto ourself. Jesus, that's beautiful. But what we think is ourself. Then we begin to pass over speed bumps, walls, obstacles. We pass over. We get. In fact, we get a pass, a free pass. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, 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 uh, it'll come to me. I'm going to sit here for a second, see if I can get it. We become pardoned. When we release the hardened, hardening, hardness of our heart, that's where we start. That's the Easter. That's when we begin to resurrect and that's when we begin to pass over the nonsense. You see, so what do these all have in common? It's all of us. And here we are. So let me look at my notes, and I think we're going to go into the next segment, which is about Passover. In the video you just seen, I played just a bit ago, with Jesus and then me going into Vessel, but the Jesus segment... <clears throat> What was revealed was Easter and resurrection. From homecoming, crossing the bridge to the soul, as the voiceover for that segment was, when that day came, Jesus accepted his death freely, thus showing those around him how such an event is not the end of life, but only a transition to another level of being. The infinite and the immortal change of the atma, the spirit, for, for for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. Genesis 3.19 Now we're moving into the segment or the video of the audio bite I'm going to play for you on Passover. But also from that video segment I played in the Jesus segment, the voiceover from Homecoming Cross on the Bridge to the Soul, in the centuries since Jesus' ascension, your ascension, Jesus' ascension, most have focused on his death instead of his life and his afterlife. People still seek him on the cross, but he is no longer there. As long as people continue to be bound to that image, they cannot begin to understand the crucifixion metaphor. This is your Easter resurrection and Passover. It's your exodus out of hell and to a unified, beautiful, heavenly earth with all brethren and sister. It's about unity. If you want to be a true follower of Christ, you must take Jesus down from that old rugged cross and move on with your life. Do you not understand that the lamb was sacrificed then for your liberation now? Jesus did his work for the purpose of showing all of us how to do our own work so we can become the Christ, the Christians, the Buddha, the Buddhas, 
in all the deities with them. As it said in the opening of this presentation, during my vesseling spirit, and again, I say, it's our turn. These deities, Ananda Maima, Sai Ma, Sathya Sai Baba, Swamji, da 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 da, they have done their work through incarnation after incarnation, and they, the spirit of God is turned within these beings who were so willing to dive into the fire and die unto themselves. For them, every moment, one eternal, expanded, infinite moment was Easter, was them dying unto themselves so they can resurrect, the phoenix could rise, so that Christ could be born, so the Buddha can become self-realized. It's our turn. It's not Jesus. It's about you, me, and we. Jesus had his cameo. <laughs> Jesus did his sacred dance 2,000 plus years ago. It's now about our exodus out of bondage from the slave race who was trying to take over and invade this world. I am moving out of my self-induced bondage. Still got a ways to go, but it can happen in a holy instant. What is the Passover? The Holy Spirit descended upon Egypt. The Lamb, Lamb's blood, blood of Christ, all that in, it includes and sacrifice, sacrificial rite, which is whatever it takes. Are you, are you, a whatever it, are you a whatever it taker? <laughs> this is what it takes for all of us to truly meet our Maker. It's a sacrifice. Give up to die to the truth, to get rid of the nonsense. Passover. Exodus out of Egypt. Exodus out of hell on earth and to a heavenly existence. Passover. Check them out. Hey, I'm Matt. Worst I'm Christian, Christian ever. And ever. I want to talk a little bit about the Passover, which is a Jewish religious festival that has existed for over 3,000 years. Let that sink in for a minute. We have to understand that when Mary and Joseph and Jesus were going to Jerusalem when Jesus was a little boy to celebrate the Passover, this was a tradition that had already been established for 12 or maybe 1400 years. There were all kinds of expectations and rituals and rites and pomp and excitement that would have gone with this thing, but it traces its roots back to the time when the Israelites were slaves in Egypt. And if you remember the story back in Exodus, you got Moses and God is working through Moses to do these weird, miraculous things to freak out the Egyptian people and to convince Pharaoh, the leader of the Egyptians, to let the Israelite people leave. And so all these plagues have happened, like hail and frogs raining from the sky, and rivers turning to blood, and just, I mean, crazy stuff. And now nine of those have happened and the Pharaoh still is not going to let the Israelites leave. And so this horrible 10th plague occurs. And this is the plague where a whole bunch of firstborn sons throughout Egypt die. So God makes this deal with the Israelites and I'm not God, I don't get the deal, but he says if you take a lamb and you kill it and you take its blood and you paint above the door of your house and on either side of the door of your house, then when this horrible plague rolls through, your firstborn won't be affected. God will pass over the houses with the blood on the door. And that's what happens. So the Jews are happy because their kids didn't die, but they're also happy because this plague breaks Pharaoh's spirit and he releases the Israelites to their freedom. So then you've got this thing that happens every year where the Israelites commemorate what God did there by having this meal. And so they have a lamb and they celebrate with all these weird rituals and stuff. And for the longest time, they just do that in their houses. But as Judaism settles down, and once there's a temple, then the expectation becomes comes that you go and do this in Jerusalem at the one and only Jewish temple. So Passover has the effect of reminding all the Jewish people of their covenant and unique relationship with God, of reminding everyone of the miraculous cool stuff that God has done for them in the past, and of keeping everyone tethered to the temple and to Jerusalem and to their families. Passover is also a really big deal in the New Testament because just narratively, Jesus' first line in the Bible happens in Luke 2 when he's in Jerusalem for 
Passover. Then Jesus' last stuff on earth, or at least before the crucifixion, also happens during Passover week. But the stuff behind the Passover is also a big deal theologically in the New Testament because Jesus fulfills the role of that Passover lamb. Remember you got that blood that people put on the door? So they take the blood of the lamb and they put it up on top of the door. And because of gravity, that blood's gonna drip down to the bottom of the door. And they put it on either side of the door. And so you got this blood of the lamb that's in the shape of a cross on doors. And as a result, it causes God's judgment to pass over people on whom otherwise his judgment would rest. Are you picking up what they're laying down here with this Bible thing? Because it's pretty thick. And I think it's pretty intentional. In fact, John the Baptist, when he first meets Jesus, says, look, there's the lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And at one point, Paul even says that Christ is our our Passover. So, long story short, the Passover to Jewish people is a celebration of the covenant God has made with them as God's chosen people. And for Christians, the Passover is a big deal because it paints a picture of Jesus as the sacrificial Passover lamb, sacrificed for the sins of all humankind, so that instead of God's judgment coming down on us, God's judgment passes over us. Welcome back to Center of Light. Good to see you tonight. It's Center of Light Harvest. It is time. It is the season. It is the reason for the season. We've been speaking about baby Jesus tonight, y'all. As the teacher, the way. Whatever is beautiful to you is the teacher. It is the pillar of light. It is the way. I noticed, this is, wasn't a setup, I noticed and the, the gentleman who just shared about the Passover for Christians as well as the Jewish he talked about the Exodus God's wonky weird ways of working through <laughs> Moses the avatar Moshe at the time to perform all these supernatural feats but in that time, there were seven, I believe, plagues. Do plagues happen during time of planetary cleansing, racial cleansing, world human, human cleansing? I'm, I'm asking a question. In the Egyptian time, rule, control, present day, rule, control, plagues, plague, plagues actually today. One, two, Omicron, this one, that one, Delta, all that. Plagues. Do plagues happen during the time of planetary cleansing? Huh? Hmm. Are we not here and yet this is happening again? Does this mean, powerful, important question, not to desecrate or trivialize the loss of any loved one? Definitely not. Does this mean that those who died are removed because of karma? Sounds brutal, but it's not. It's the truth. Everyone is removed every day, all the time, forever because of karma. Why in this bunch, in this batch? Don't know. I'm asking questions. They're removed. We are removed from e equations and situations. I know it sounds like blasphemy, but forever, until one chooses, they will wrestle with this conundrum. 
They might not actively wrestle with this conundrum. Like, I'm going into meditation and I don't know what to do with this idea that Keith or whoever posed to me doesn't necessarily have to be that way. On some level, you are asking questions because you demand, deserve, want, turn, burn, churn, yearn for answers. There is no answer. That's the point. That's the cancer. There is no answer. None. Zilch. Nit. Not. There is no answer to anything. You are the answer to everything. So what question are you posing? Stop supposing. Moses supposes his toes are roses. It gets wonky in that. What are you looking for? I have things. I like things. I love things. Beyond things, what are you looking for? We're all looking for self-fulfillment. Every being in the universe who is not fully illumined is looking for self-fulfillment. Those beings who are self-fulfilled are not looking for anything because there's nothing to find. And no matter where you look, all you will find is your mind if you look for anything at all. Everything is within you. Resurrect. It's Easter. Pass over the nonsense that we all have been indoctrinated, bought into. Stop buying anything. It's free. It's free will. Choose. Still, make yourself happy for no reason. There is no path to happiness. Happiness is the path. Harvest. Take what's yours. Give what's theirs. It's Easter. Share. Care. Resurrect. Rise up. Stand up. Wake up. Open up. Pass over your past. Cross over. Cross over, children. All are welcome. All are welcome into the light. Get out of your poltergeist nature, your demons. Stop fighting. And when you find yourself fighting, give yourself a massage and forgive yourself. In the mirage, the illusion, the contusion, the bruising, the abrasion, rise to the occasion. It is your resurrection. Peace, loving. Happy Easter.